good day out there today. Obviously, you probably noticed it was a, a lighter day. That's obviously in preparation for tomorrow going down to Lucas Oil. You know, we're really going to treat that like it's a like it's a game. Um, we'll get good work. It'll be our longest, I would anticipate, our most intense and hardest practice. So uh, looking forward to that. So just important to make sure the guys get some rest and can recover and uh, know that they'll do that. So we got exactly uh, today, we got exactly what we wanted out of that practice. Break a sweat, get some good mental work, some good situational work. Um, you probably saw, you know, we had two new signings, Joey Hunt Center and uh, on Andre Sachere, um, uh corner. So glad to have those guys on board. Much needed, uh, much needed depth and, you know, so that we can continue to be competitive and challenge each other and, and get ready for the season. Um, a few planned rest days today. Trey Burton was a planned rest. Paris Campbell was planned rest. Uh, T, uh, T.Y. and then Justin, Justin Houston was a planned rest. So um, really just trying to, you know, the closing message to the guys today was, you know, we, we got to treat this like a game. We'll have two shots at this going down to Lucas Oil. Let's make the most of them. All right, Kevin Bowen. Hey, Frank. Um, hey, Kevin. Given all the uncertainty, no preseason games, things like that, would you say that you might be looking for more proven guys on your 53-man roster and you can't afford to take some some chances or some unknowns on guys that maybe haven't you know, shown up in a game setting before? I mean, I think that's a, that's a logical conclusion and logical thinking. Um, you know, we're going to use every means that we have you know, we talk about, you know, trust, toughness, and team being our foundation. So it's about getting guys, to, and the trust thing is huge. So can we trust Can we trust you? Can we trust each other? So there's a lot of things that go into that evaluation. Certainly guys that have been around the league a little bit, um, that they bring a degree of, that degree of experience is, uh, means a lot. So uh, that factors into it. But I still believe that there's time for the quote unquote unproven guy um, to to show to show that we can trust him. And that's what we'll hope to find out over these next few weeks. And then one follow up with the expanded practice squad of you and Chris talked about maybe that offering more flexibility, one guy at each position. What, what, what do you think that kind of opens up for you guys? Yeah, I mean, we've talked a lot about it and the fact that you can have some what the other really nice thing about it is, you know, you can have veterans on there. I mean, there's, there's no, no limitations there. So um, all of those considerations positionally will, you know, factor into what the makeup of the whole roster ends up being. Um, those are daily discussions um, and always being tweaked depending on, <clears throat> depending on the health of the team. So, um, Chris does a phenomenal job of managing that and staying out in front of it. And it's not just the guys that you have lined up on the practice squad. It's having a pipeline of guys who are on deck to be on the practice squad. And, you know, we're in good hands there. Chris, uh, Chris and his staff do a phenomenal job. Phil B. Hey, Coach. Thank you for your time. You got it, Phil. Uh, I wanted to ask you about offensive tackle depth. I saw Andrew Donald went on IR today and, I know Chaz Green's been fighting with a little leg issue. I'm not sure the status of him, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot there, but more about just sorting out who's going to back up a tackle and where going to go, what you're looking at. Yeah, I mean, um, O-line depth is critically important. So, you know, we'll continue, to, we'll continue to find out where the depth is coming from. Obviously, you know, Braden, Braden got back out there today, so it's good to have him back out there in a limited capacity. Um, the Ravens gotten a lot of work. Um, you know, Carter O'Donnell has looked, has been slowly developing Brandon Hittner slowly developing. Um, so, um, and you know, we, Chaz, Chaz is getting better. Um, so, and we, and we think Chaz has, Chaz has some ability as well. So those are, those are important questions that need to be answered. Those questions aren't answered at this point, but, um, that's a real competitive battle there to see, you know, who that, who the next two tackles are going to be. Um, so ongoing battle to be updated later. Thank you. Mike Chapel. Morning coach. Hey chap. It's obvious that you, that you plan for just about every possibility because you have to, 
Have you taken into account whether you're going to play in September with 25% capacity or no crowd, or does that really impact what you do now? A little bit. We have, we've talked a lot about it. We've been talking about it for months, really. Um, you know, so when we're down there, when we're down there tomorrow, and when we're down there um, later in the week, you know, we'll, we'll turn the decibel level, you know, we'll, everything will be on just like it was. And then uh, I believe on Saturday, I believe we're have a few people in the stands. Um, if I saw, I don't, I don't really pay attention too much to that stuff, but if I saw some kind of notice that some people will be there. Um, but we will be, we will be piping in noise um, both days that we're down there. Uh, the league rule, I think, is 80 decibels. So we'll be piping 80 decibels into the stadium. Um, and, and you know, we'll, we'll play there. So there is the factor, though, chap, as well. I mean, what's it going to feel like? So um, that's the other reason why I think it's important to go down to the stadium. You know, we'll be down there tomorrow, and there will be no fans in the stands. And so that'll be, you know, that'll be a good experience. And, uh, you know, just to feel that. And then um, when we get when we get there later in the week, um, you know, there'll be a few bodies up there, but that's, that's, we got to be able to focus in and, and adapt to those uh, changing circumstances. Just a quick follow up. And I know this is above your pay grade, but there's so much about competitive balance. Let's say you guys have, let's say no fans and Tennessee can have fans. Is it, is it, would it bother you that there's no fans here, but then you go on the road and there is fans, or is that just something you have to deal with week to week? I, I always try to be of a great question. Um, my mindset is always a positive mindset is that I see everything as a competitive advantage for us. And it's just a matter of perspective. So I'm going to find a way to look at it where it's positive for us. And um, I don't, I'm not worried about no fans versus 25, 25% fans somewhere else. Um, We've thought about, we've talked about those things. We've thought about them, but not worried about it. Thanks, Frank. Yep. Mike Wells. Hey, Frank, I want to ask you, um, you know, in the past 24 hours, the league has had some issues with the COVID testing tests that came out positive that weren't positive. Have you guys had any issues where you've had to alter schedules, you know, prior to training camp because of, you, you know, a test came back positive, but it wasn't positive and had to adapt to your schedule? No, we've not had anything. Uh, we've not had to adapt any schedules. Um, we've not, you know, we haven't had that happen on a large scale. Um, you know, we haven't had that happen on a large scale. So nothing that we've ever had to adapt. Okay. Then I want to follow up. You know, you guys, you've mentioned, Matt Eberflus has mentioned, talk about your, your three starting linebackers and even the depth, depth of it. What makes this group in your eyes, you believe, meaning Bobby, um, Anthony, and Darius, one of the top units in the league? Um, very, very smart, very fast, um, and can make plays in the run and pass game. I mean, they, they all are play with what we call accelerated vision. They see things very quickly. Their mind processes things very quickly. You know, then they have the athletic ability to finish on plays, um, you know, which is very important at that position. And so, and, and they just, it, and they got good chemistry. I mean, these, these are three great leaders. I mean, th these are three great leaders. And um, so we feel great about this group for sure. Joel Erickson. Frank, you mentioned uh, Carter O'Donnell. Um, I think he's from Canadian football. What, what, what went into kind of just finding him? Uh, you'd have to ask, uh, you know, Chris, all the details of, of digging into that. But, you know, it's always a little bit of an adjustment, right, coming from Canada. So, you know, over the years I've had, I've had guys on our team that have come from Canada. And you can find some good football players up there. But there's always an adjustment period. So, you know, we'll see how it goes with Carter. Um, you, know, we'll see, you know, we'll see how it goes with Carter. He's, he's working hard, um, you know, learning the ropes. And, you know, we'll just continue to evaluate that as it goes. But, you know, Chris – and his staff just do a phenomenal job, right? I mean, looking everywhere and anywhere for guys who fit what it means to be a Colt. So um, we're, we're grateful for that. Zach Keeper. Frank, you've had Justin Houston in the building for a year now. Um, he doesn't seem like a guy that talks a lot. 
what's it like coaching him? Does he need a lot of coaching? Is he a guy you just kind of leave alone? He's a veteran. He knows what he's going to do. Um, I'm just kind of curious. What's your approach with a guy like that? And what have you learned about him in the last year? I mean, you give him the respect that he deserves, and he deserves a lot of respect for the way he practices, for the way he um, takes care of himself. I mean, he's transformed his body. Um, he's in the best shape of his life. Um, he practices the way we, you know, that you want to see a vet practice. He's a great mentor and teacher to the young guys out there. But, um, but no, I mean, and, and you're right, Zach. I mean, he, he's a man of few words, but he, when he speaks, everyone listens. And carry, he carries a lot of weight. So he's a definitely a strong leader on this team. I, I do think, you know, even in these set scenarios where you have a guy who's a proven leader like Justin Houston, everybody needs to be coached and challenged, and um, including Justin. And, you know, I learned from Marv Levy that you treat everybody fairly, not everybody the same. So, yeah, I mean, Justin gets certain considerations in certain ways, but nobody gets a free pass when it comes to how we practice and how we push guys and how hard we coach you on fundamentals and technique. Everybody needs to be pushed in that regard. If you don't mind me asking, um, what do you mean transform his body? Was that when he moved from the, the Kansas City's 3-4 to this defense? Um, well, no, that, yeah, that's a, you know, the, the, the scheme change, but that's actually not what I'm talking about. I mean, he just, um, his body composition, um, you know, we, we place a very high emphasis on body composition. This and, is his work with Rusty? Yes. And after a player gets here and we get to know him and evaluate him, you know, we'll make suggestions. And, you know, Justin has been probably, you know, one of the guys who has set the tone for our whole team. You know, when you get a guy who's accomplished what he's accomplished and then to come in here and to buy into, you know, that mode of thinking and to, and, to, and to change his body composition to the degree that he has. Um, that speaks volumes to, the, first of all, about him and his discipline. And it's been consistent since he's been here. I mean, we all know that's hard to do. And he's done it consistently. But it also speaks volumes to the team. And, uh, you know, in fact, we showed a slide the other day of a bunch of guys who have done just that. And... You know, Justin's leading the way, and when you see him doing it, it really, I think, motivates um, a lot of the guys to do that. Now, a lot of the guys are right where they need to be, but that's a – it's a, every evaluation is customized for the player, you know, with Rusty and his staff. Okay, hey, we'll do three more. George Bremer. Coach, I think one of the younger guys, comparing Tavon Wilson to kind of having Mike Mitchell back in, in, the, in the room – how important is it having a veteran like that in that group, especially as young as the defensive back group is? So important. I mean, on, on so many levels, you know, Chris and I have talked a lot about this and um, yeah, his presence back there, you can immediately feel it. The veteran presence on the back. It's really important at every position, but I just think there's something about it on the back end as well. Um, you know, so he's done a great job on and off the field. He's the kind of player that fits our culture. Um, tough, smart, um, great teammate, uh, you know, just versatile. Um, he's exactly what we're looking for. So um, it makes it very competitive back there. He can teach and mentor, but can compete. I mean, this guy can play, still play a lot. and has a lot of good football left in him. So we're uh, certainly glad we have him. Stephen Holder. Hey, Frank. Uh, hey, saw uh, Moali Mo has been out for a while, and we saw him out there, you know, make a leaping catch today. It kind of made me, you know, kind of reminded me he's back. And uh, just what, in terms of what you've seen from him from day one to now, um, is there still more room for development? Because he's done a lot, but is there still more room for development, number one? And number two, um, just how important is his role just because of what he provides you as a blocker, but also being able to go out there and do that? Yeah, I'm glad you asked me about him. I mean, this guy is so instrumental on our team. I mean, I, I see Mo as a very important part of our roster, whether he plays 10 plays in the game or 30 plays in a game. Um, he's really developed. You know, he deserves a lot of that credit. He's really worked at his game. He's become a much better route runner. I, when I tell you 
he's improved in his route running. It, it's very significant. And, and he's done that. And I think Jason's helped him in that regard as well. And I think that Mo is also, he's always been, you know, that big physical guy. Um, so his blocking has always been good, but it's just gotten better. And he's just a dominant, he's a, this, he's a dominating physical presence on the football field. And there's something to be said for that. And you feel Mo when he's on the field and he makes a big impact for us. And he's a guy that we do not underestimate the importance of him being out there on the field for us. So I think there's a lot of upside yet. I really do. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of upside for Mo. I think he's just getting started. Okay, last one, Wish TV. Coach, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but I'm joining you from the track. We don't get to ask you this type of question often with this being August. Um, who you got in the race today? If you have a, a favorite or, or any prediction? Oh, I know. I'm glad you asked. I, you know, I am a fan, but I, I have to confess that um, starting in when we start training camp, I'm, I'm on lockdown. I, I haven't seen another sporting event, no of a sporting event. You know, we're early in the morning till late at night. So I, I confess I, I can't. I'm not in a place to pick a winner. Um, I'm just glad that I'm here in a city where, um, you know, this sporting event, like I woke up this morning, for instance, and I got three daughters who are all in their 20s, and my daughters are texting me about the race today. And so that makes me happy and proud to be a part of this city that, you know, even my three daughters who were here and who've experienced what racing means to this city um, in our family text string, waking up t texting, you know, family texturing, text, uh, texting about the Indy 500, hooting and hollering. Um, it's, a, it's a big day in Indy.